You know, uh, it w I thought it was uh, was good. We, as you could see, it was a lot of uh, a lot of just learning today, going back over stuff, putting in a few new things, but really staying separate, letting guys teach, getting the basics put in, and. Uh, you know, I've never done it exactly like this. We've always had some interaction with offense and defense every practice of our lives. But uh, I thought, you know, in shorts, that's kind of what these acclimatization days are for. You know, and don't get any extra banging around or anything like that. And, and uh, so I think uh, I think it's a, a good thing what we did. And I like the fact that they stayed focused for about two and a half hours. And we got some stuff done. And we got a lot put in today, actually. Mike, big, you know, hard news for you with your dad, did you think about going back and missing today? Yeah, the, all sorts of stuff like that. You know, I, I and of course I, I, I thought about it and I talked to all of our family about it. And uh, so my wife's up there with with my mom right now, and they're making some plans and arrangements, and and uh, they'll be able to do all that. And I was just up there about I don't know first part of July, so. We'll, we'll be doing something here in the future. I don't know exactly when. Your dad, obviously a big influence on your decision to coach. What do you think was the single most important thing he taught you about being a coach? Well, he uh, he, he uh, taught me to be myself. He, he told me that. And uh, he said that's the most important thing in coaching is don't try to be somebody else. Try to be yourself. And the other thing that he showed me is he showed me a love of the game and a love for his players. I mean, that was that was him. And he was a very, actually, simple person. He did his job extremely well, and he was a great husband for over 60 years and a great father. So that was simply him, and he didn't do much else. That was That's what he did. You find yourself thinking about him at moments today? You know, I do, uh, all the time. You know, I'm very thankful for for him. I, I, I like I've said in the past, you know that because of my dad, that's why I'm coaching. I mean, I followed my dad around into the locker rooms since I would, could can remember or before that. You know, he he was coaching in high school, and I was on the bus in the locker room on the uh, sidelines, uh, carrying the dummies in after practice. I was kind of a gym rat. And I never even knew there was anything else to do. <laughs> so uh, I'm thankful for that about my dad. He was a high school history teacher and coach when he got started, and that's I went to college, majored in history, got my teacher certificate, and uh, I was ready to go do that. I got sidetracked somewhere along the way, but uh, that's that I was going to follow exactly in his footsteps. Mike, you are uh, arguably the patriarch of the Pac-12 now. Not arguably. I had, <laughs> had the years up. <laughs> so what about that? I mean, did you? I'm you thankful know. for that. I love the fact that I, you know, I, I, I probably should have done this in the first place, and and uh, you know, and, and I always admired those guys that stayed in programs and tried to make it the best they could be. You know, and there's some difficulty in doing that, obviously. But I, I love the fact we've been here. I love the fact that our players understand. Uh, what our program's about, and I think you people understand what our program's about, and I think that we've, you know, even though we've stubbed our toes here lately, we've made progress in the program through the years, I'm, I'm, and I'm proud to be able to survive in this business this long at a place I love that, and, uh, you know, I've made it clear that I want this to be my last job, and I want to just keep rolling, and I want to win this conference championship. Coming off a year like you guys had last year, how much more do you just want to get out here? I can't qualify this? it as any more. I mean, I, if, I, if I went back, I'd be cheating my other years. I, I want it. You know, we spend so much time, we're committed so much, our players, our coaches, everybody wants to do the very best they can do every year. Now there's there's added incentive, right? I mean, it just makes you hungry to do it. But we have always put everything we've had into preparation. It's just like I tell players for a ball game, you know. We'll never say, well, we overlooked this team. Or, you know, that's ridiculous. We, we look forward to every practice, every game, every season, every, every bit of it. And we have to, we're all, we're all obligated to do our best every time we walk out here. Anybody stand out today? Oh, you know what, John, with what we did, you know, we, we played the air today and we were, we just barely beat them. You know, that was, <laughs> that was about, that was about it. So I, I don't think that uh, I could say I could pick out a standout. The backs all gained a ton of yards, you know, <laughs> that was nice, but, uh, I think the one thing we did today, we got a lot of stuff in, and we and we somewhat 
you know, got in and out of the huddle, got the formations correctly, uh, stuff like that I was kind of pleased with. What signs do you look for that this year can be different than the previous two? Well, you know, I think that I don't, ha I don't have any signs yet, but uh, I think the, the thing we have going for us is we have a lot of guys that have played in the games, and I think they're good players. You know, you know when you're three and nine and everybody's coming back, that can be a good thing or maybe not so good. But uh, I think these are good kids that played and are back and uh, had a great offseason. Worked, li worked like crazy. We're great teammates to each other. We had very, very few problems uh, in any of that deal. And so I think the intentions have been good. I think the coach's preparation for this day and the start of the season has been outstanding again. And uh, I'm very thankful for uh, the work that they've put in. Looks like you don't have a quarterback controversy this time, so that's a head start, right? No, I don't, but I'm really pleased with Cody Vaz, and I think we can't discount the fact that he has always been, a, I think, a very good competitor for the stop, spot, but, but Sean is our starter for sure. And But, I, you, you know, you always need another guy, and I think we have one in Cody. Mike, how about this field? Oh, I'm really, you know, this this is, it's fun to beep a place for a while and, and be able to have some thoughts about what would be really nice down the road, you know. And so I've had a vision for this field like this with lights on it for a long time, and I can't wait till our first night practice out here. And then I've been pushing for, I don't know if you've seen the game field, but I've been pushing for getting that turf all the way to the wall forever. And I've even put together film <laughs> clips about this is why we need to do this, you know, and, and, uh, and it just looks good to me. So I, I'm really excited. I'd love to keep working on these projects that make, you know, Oregon State, Oregon State football just continue to grow. Uh, so it's really, I'm, I'm really proud to see this. We've had a lot of people work very, very hard, contribute, you know, to help me raise money, all that stuff. And then to see it and get out here on it, it's really, uh, we're, we're also thankful for that. Everybody show up that you expected or planned to? Yes, you know we, we had a we had two guys late because of uh, one for personal reasons and one because of a plane, and uh, besides that, uh, we were good to go. You know, what yeah. about uh, moving Joe Vaughn yeah. to DBs? Yeah, you know, uh, we have as you guys have seen a lot of players at tailback. You know, we're looking for that guy, and Javon could fit right into that group. But I think in that mix, those guys are all players. They are all on all special, not all, not all, all the special teams, but they are all on special teams. They all will contribute, and there's six of them. You know, and six backs aren't going to play. But I've got this one guy that could be in the mix to be in the top oh, one, two, three, four backs, but we are thin at corner. What we need to find some guys that can go over there and play. He ran 4-4. Four, four. He's got good size. He's got great awareness. He's got good instincts. And... Uh, He's tough, and so I asked him to go over there and play corner, and uh, we'll see if, you know, we can all, I, he is very smart, so he can pop back and get back in the mix, but if he can make an impact and get ready to play, then he will help us at some point, and he is also on a number of special teams, and uh, I, think, I think that it was a good move, uh, obviously, I don't move guys that can't play, I don't just do that, so, you know, I'm looking for him for an opportunity to see what he can do. And it won't happen overnight. He won't look good for a while. He's got to go over there and get comfortable and figure out what we're doing a little bit. But uh, he could help us down the road. Coach, preparation for this year. I don't know if you do anything fun, run with bowls, swim with sharks or anything like that. <laughs> oh, you know what? I... Uh, yeah, we, we, di we did have, have fun, and uh, we, we went on a trip like we usually do as a family, and uh, for the first time in my life in the summertime, I got to take a grandson with me, so that was fun. Mike, what did you see from uh, Chris Brown? You know, true freshman coming in, but his, clearly his body is not a freshman. No, he's a, he's a, you know, we knew that he was a physical kid and would fit in physically right away. And now it's a matter, you know, to see Chris get going as we put the pads on and then see how, how much he can, you know, assimilate and get ready to go. You know, those... Uh, those guys like uh, Quiz, they're kind of unique, right? It's such great football uh, instincts, savvy knowledge. I mean, he, he was a football aware like almost nobody I've been around. So he comes in as a true freshman, picks up all the blocking schemes. It is all, he studies hard, but it's all relatively made sense for him. And we'll see where Chris is with that. You know, some guys take longer with all that. If he, if he can pick it all up, feel comfortable, there's no doubt he's a physically capable guy, and there's no doubt he's a good runner. I want to see him how he is as a pass receiver and see how he fits in because, 
you know, we're we're looking we're looking hard in the in the next couple of weeks for those guys that are going to emerge as the top two backs. Yeah. Well, a few few short years ago, we led the nation in rush defense, and we were in the top of our conference, third down defense, red zone defense, and we're not anymore. So, you know, we got to get back to that, and uh, you know, we're we're. Uh, you know, banking on growth, experience, and we have some talented young guys that played last year. And I think we have a, we'll have, I think we'll have a very stable secondary, and I think we'll have good speed at the out, outside linebackers, which in this day of age of football is an absolute, absolute necessity with all the spread stuff you see and, and the speed other people have. So, and I think we have that, and I think we have some talent at defensive end, and now we're developing some good depth there. And really, it's a lot of it's going to be who can get with Andrew Samalo and play a good defensive tackle for us. We hope Castro, of course, is there and Mono Rosa steps in and can do a good job. We have some names and guys that improved in the spring, but that's going to be a big, big factor. Uh, and, and you're right, both sides of the line, or both sides of the ball, the lines need to, need to play. I how mean, how many freshman linemen have to contribute? Well, I think a minimum of two and maybe three. You know, and, and, I, and by contribute, I mean be in the top ten. And that's that's a little bit hard to say because you know you you really think in um, in most of your life uh, offensive linemen have redshirted, <laughs> and here we're talking about maybe a starter, uh, maybe a couple of uh, immediate backups, which is which is hard to say. But we knew we had a good group coming in, and uh, and and we had high expectations for them because of our depth. So we'll see what how it plays out. Mike, what do you tell a guy like Jordan Poyer with so much hype coming in this season and clearly looking ahead maybe to the NFL? Well, you know, I, I think that uh, guys like Jordan Poyer write their resume every day. You know, and so people uh, are obviously going to be watching him more closely. And, you know, he has uh, taken on a role as a captain for our team. So, you know, the, the, my advice to him has been you, you have to stay in the present. You know, don't put yourself into some place when you're not gone yet. And, uh, and, and it, frankly, I've seen many guys hurt themselves by, by leaving before they're gone. And uh, so I think that. Uh, Jordan is wise and he's so competitive. I don't think he'll let anything slip. He can't stand to get beat. Can't stand for our team to get beat. Uh, he's a great leader. And he and we have had some guys, I think a big question mark for our team since last year has been leadership. And I think we've had some guys like Poyer and Wheaton really step into a different role. Uh, and uh, I think it's exciting to see. By talking about a freshman line, uh, I see him always. He's one of those guys that you had all along.